Hi, this video is on parallel and perpendicular lines. You can see in the picture that we have a set of parallel lines. Parallel lines run side by side like railroad tracks and they don't ever intersect. Well, since they're slanted the same, we say that parallel lines have the same slope. So that word there is same. And we can check that out very quickly by picking two points on the line, rising, let's see, I rise three, I run two, and that gives me a slope of the red line of three halves. And now I'm going to pick two points on the blue line. Notice I rise three and I run two on the blue line as well. So if two lines have the same slope, they are said to be parallel. Perpendicular lines, on the other hand, meet at right angles, a 90 degree angle, like a wall meets a floor. That way the buildings don't fall down. Perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. And your teacher in middle school may have said opposite reciprocal. Negative and opposite can mean the same thing. Let's check it out. So I'm going to pick two points on the negatively sloped line. I'm going to start with the higher one and go down one. Uh oh. And I'm going to go down one, two, three, four. So that's down four or negative four. And I'm going to go over one to the right. So one of my slopes is negative. 4 over 1. I'll use, let's see, green for my other line. I'm going to pick two points on my line and to get from left to right I rise 1 and I run 1, 2, 3, 4 and that's the slope of 1 fourth. So negative reciprocal means change the sign and flip it over. Now notice something, a lot of books will say that the slopes of perpendicular lines multiply to make negative 1. So let's check that out. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 and 1 times 4 is positive 4 and that does indeed equal negative 1. In this example we have a set of parallel line equations. We can tell that they're parallel because the slope is the same for both. Remember when you have y equals mx plus b, the coefficient on x is the slope. So let's go ahead and graph these. The first equation has a y-intercept of 1, and the slope is 2 thirds. So I go up 2 and over 3. There's my second point on my line. I connect them with a straight line. The second equation has a y-intercept of negative 3, so I plot negative 3 on the y-axis, I go up 2 and over 1, 2, 3, and then I connect those with a straight line. These equations represent perpendicular lines. If you take a look at the slopes, this slope is positive 2 thirds and this slope is negative 3 halves. So the first slope is, three, is excuse me, 2 over 3 and the second slope is negative and 3 over 2, opposite reciprocals. Let's go ahead and graph the first line. The y-intercept is 1, the slope is up 2 and over 1, 2, 3. There's a second point, connect them, and we have our first line. The second equation has a y-intercept of negative 2, plot that, and then we need to go down 3 and over 2. So down 3 and over 2 to the right to get a second point on the line, connect them, and you can see that these two lines are perpendicular. Now in these two equations, the, um, we have to do a little bit more work on the second one. The first equation has a slope of 3, but the second equation, y is not isolated, so we can't pick out the slope yet. So we're going to solve for y by moving the x, and that gives us 3y equals negative 
x minus 6. And then we're going to move the 3 by dividing both sides by 3. And we end up with the equation y equal negative 1 third x minus 2. Recall that when you divide by 3, you're dividing both terms by 3. All right, let's graph these. The first equation has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 1, 2, 3 over 1. The second equation has a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of negative 1 third. So I go down 1 over 3 and then I connect them with a line and I think again you'll believe me when I tell you that these two lines are perpendicular. Now we're going to practice everything we've just learned. We're going to look at these equations and see if we can pick out which equations are parallel to each other. Now I recommend before you even start this process you go through and make sure you have y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form for all your equations. So the first equation, y equals 3x plus 4, is ready. y equals 6 is ready. y equals 1 half x minus 8. y equals 3x minus 7. But then this fifth equation, 2x plus y equals negative 6, we need to isolate y. To isolate y, we have to move the 2x to the other side of the equation, and we do that by subtracting. So we're going to subtract the 2x and keep the minus 6. So I'm going to scribble out the original because we only care about the new one. And the last equation is also in slope-intercept form, y equal negative 4. All right, what is the slope of the first equation? Well, it's 3. Do you see another equation with a coefficient on x of 3? Here it is right here. So we're going to circle first equation and the fourth equation with red because they are a pair of parallel lines. Now the second equation is a horizontal line. Remember, when you only have a y, it's horizontal. So the only kind of line that's parallel to a horizontal line is another horizontal line. So we're looking for another only has a y equation. And we can see that right down here at the bottom. So y equals 6 and y equals negative 4 are parallel lines as well. Now my third equation has a slope of 1 half. Do you see another slope of 1 half? Well, the only other line we have left is the one we worked on, and it has a slope of negative 2. So those lines, this equation and this equation, do not represent a set of parallel lines. We're going to do the same process with perpendicular lines now. Uh, before we start, we're going to again look for that y equal mx plus b structure. The first equation is negative 1 third x plus 4. That's good. y equals 6. Good. y equals 1 half x minus 8. Good. y equals negative 3x minus 7 is good. Uh-oh. This one needs a little bit of work. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 2 because we want that y isolated. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So I'm going to scribble out the original. All right, so we have a slope of negative 1 third. The negative reciprocal of negative 1 third is positive 3. Do you see an equation with a slope of positive 3? We're looking for positive 3, and there's not one. So this one does not have um, a, a perpendicular partner. The second equation is y equals 6. As we saw on the last slide, when there's only a y, it's a horizontal line. So think horizontal and think perpendicular. This is like your floor, and this is like your wall. If your floor and your wall aren't perpendicular, your house is going to fall down eventually. So we're looking for a vertical line, vertical. 
And the equation of a vertical line only has an x, and we do have one. So let's circle that pair in green. They are perpendicular. All right, the next, the next equation here has a slope of positive 1 half. The opposite reciprocal of positive 1 half is negative 2. So do you see an equation with a slope of negative 2? Uh, I do. Here he is right there. So this equation and this equation are perpendicular. And that leaves one more equation without a partner. So I'm just going to go ahead and scribble him out. Well, that's all there is to parallel and perpendicular lines. Thank you for watching.